Kim Porter, The Social Climber, Al B. Shore, Devante Swing, Diddy, and Jackie Long. Just another industry pass around? Uptown Chronicles. Like many with no talent looking for a quick come up, being around high profile, top dollar musicians, actors, and whatever else in between can be a huge stepping stone for aspiring singers and models alike. Kim Porter, more famously known as Diddy's off again, on again, once upon a time, lover and the mother of three of his children entered the industry in hopes of becoming an in-demand model, but somehow ended up being eye candy and linked to almost all of Uptown Records' biggest artists at the time, moving from Columbus, Georgia to New York in hopes of chasing the bag and her dreams. Things were a little shaky in the beginning. With her not booking the gigs like she had hoped, she'd end up being hired as a receptionist over at Uptown, where a curious Albie Shore, Devante Swing, and P. Diddy all seem to have had their fair share at romanticizing her. The relationships, or um, situationships, according to the men at least, were pretty serious on their ends. But with how swiftly Kim ended one union and hopped on to the next, people seem to think otherwise. So how exactly did she go from posing for cream of nature perm boxes and answering phone calls to having songs written about her, appearing in Joe to see music videos and becoming Diddy's baby's mother? While on the hunt for her next modeling gig, Kim went where any other person would go to surround themselves with like-minded individuals and networking opportunities. That place being an industry party. While getting her socializing on and contacts together, Kim spotted a tall, handsome man with a unibrow that ended up being Albie Shore and smooth talked her way right into his contact list. The story story goes a little something like this. They began talking all night and day. Wink, wink. And Kim ultimately got past the talking stage because shortly after that, he was making phone calls in order to move Kim from Georgia closer to where he stayed in New York in hopes of connecting Kim to modeling agencies. They'd begun searching for modeling jobs and things of that sort. And although she had booked a few gigs, she wasn't making enough to sustain her living situation from those gigs alone. Needing a way to financially support herself with Al's connections, she'd take a job working as a receptionist for the label Al was signed to, Uptown Records. While doing what she does, she'd make her way around the premises, eventually becoming comfortable with her newfound job, co-workers, and artists. The relationship was more serious than people had thought, because sometime in 1990, Kim would end up pregnant with her first child, Quincy. And it wasn't until years after the fact that Al had admitted to have rewritten the first verse of Jodeci's Forever My Lady for Kim, due to her being pregnant with his child at the time. After Kim's unfortunate passing in 2018, Al went on to Fox Soul and disclosed that him and Kim were briefly married, going on to say that nobody knew of their marriage since him and Kim never talked about it. It's rumored that the marriage was either annulled or a fairy tale consisted of Al B's grieving guilty consciousness. While Al and Kim's relationship was coming to its end in the early 90s, Kim and Porter of Jodeci member Devante Swing were getting pretty close for comfort. Signed to Uptown himself at the time, Devante had written Forever My Lady way before he got discovered by Andre Harrell. But as we already know, Al B helped remaster the song and added his own touch. So the two weren't only signed to the same label, but they were basically mutual co-workers by this time. Although it's never been officially stated that Kim and Devante were an actual item, fans seem to think that the two definitely had a thing fling going on due to the timeline of events that were publicly shown. In Jodeci's Asylum-themed video for their song Phenin, we see a short snippet of Devante lip-locking with leading Lady Kim before it fades away into the next cut. In a BET DocuGroove episode, viewers were taken behind the scenes of the music video, where Devante explains how this particular video was his first, having creative control and directing a video for his group. During the clip, we see a young Kim Porter seated next to Devante as he explains why she was chosen as the leading lady for the video, stating that she was chosen because they've been friends for a while and that she was the most, and I quote, beautiful woman he knew. A friend of mine, you know, uh, she, she was the most beautiful that I know. 
Rumors of the two dating had sparked, and it's been alleged that Kim would be over Devante's house on wife duties, cooking and cleaning, sometimes while other associates of Uptown were around. Hopping off the set of the Fiending music video and moving on to Diddy and his many alter egos, almost a year after Kim starred in Jodeci's video, is when we would see her entangled with the group's friend, personal cheerleader, Sean Combs. Diddy was Jodeci's helping hand man at the time, aiding in the group's creative direction and overall image, which is why when it was confirmed that Kim was dating Diddy, people couldn't help but to raise a brow or two. Now fired from Uptown and establishing his own label that is Bad Boy Records, Kim decided to go where the money resides and follow Diddy right on over to his newfound music venture. Their relationship would become even more solid when it was announced that Kim had given birth to their first child together, Christian Combs, in 1998. In latter years, the relationship got pretty rocky and the pair called it quits little less than a year after Christian was born. Despite the relationship being no more, the two remained friends and began co-parenting their son up until the year 2003, when they decided to try things out between them once more. This on-again, off-again charade would continue with talks of cheating being a focal point in their out-of-balance union. Sometime in 2005, Kim became pregnant with their twin daughters, Delilah and Jesse, and by 2006, she had given birth, but the plot thickens when we discovered that not only had Kim gave birth to Diddy's twins, his longtime associate, Sarah Chapman, had also given birth to her daughter, Chance, five months before the twins. Kim found out Diddy was creeping on the low and discovered that Sarah was pregnant with Diddy's child. So in order to keep her role as the main woman in his life, it's been alleged that she'd taken fertility pills in order to conceive her twins, allegedly. It's also been reported that Kim and Diddy's relationship was rockier than a mountain and that not only was he controlling, but he had allegedly abused her as well. Allegedly. More on that in another video. Tired of his shenanigans, Kim said she packed all of her bags, the twins' bags, and dipped before Diddy got the chance to stop her. Stating that Diddy wasn't a talking-to type of guy, the two split up for good in 2007, but remained cordial in order to co-parent their children. Keeping her love life under wraps, years would flow by before we would publicly see Kim in the spotlight with her new friend with benefits, actor Jackie Long in 2010. You would think after three years of splitting up, seeing your ex with her new lover wouldn't be that much of a big deal, especially for someone like Diddy, who's been accused of cheating on Kim 511 times. Nevertheless, Diddy basically told her that he was the only person she'd be allowed to have romantic feelings for. Because soon after he found out Kim and Jackie were in fact an item, Diddy had began sending Jackie death threats, warning him to stay away from Kim. Threats consisting of phone calls and messages saying that he, who would be Diddy, wouldn't think twice about wiping Jackie off the face of the earth. It's safe to say Jackie brushed this to the side because because he and Kim's relationship will last for two years before splitting in 2012. Doing what you can to get to the tippy top isn't necessarily a bad idea, nor are we condemning Kim for using her good looks to slip and slide her way throughout the industry. Whether she was a social climber who used famous men to get her start within the business and secure her place in the industry, or a woman who casually dated around and just so happened to wind up being the mother of Diddy's children. Given the evidence and timeline, the social climbing meter might just be leaning more so toward the first theory. But we'll leave that up for you to decide. Do you think Kim Porter was an opportunist? Let us know what you think and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.